Good morning, Social Work Connect. I wanted, this is Tasha. I am the um, owner of Talk to Tasha. I am a social workpreneur. So I stepped out and I'm doing entrepreneurship. Um, I got distracted, I'm sorry. So I am the one that uh, stepped out and um, started my own business as a social worker, doing some freelance work, some contractual work and really mobilizing our social workers to explore other options in their career. Our career is very broad, we know, but oftentimes if we um, are working really long hours, you're super tired, I've been there, um, you just don't know what's outside of your cubicles or your offices or your hospitals, uh, whatever work that you're out there doing, you're working long hours, by the time you get home, you just wanna lay down. You don't have time to explore other options of serving. Some of you guys are care bearers. That's what I call you guys interchangeably um, because we know how to care for others. We know how to give. We know how to hold on to the, the core values that we are um, called to do. Service, social, social justice, and uh, dignity, integrity, and all those things. But as an entrepreneur, I want to let you know when I came out, I was um, opened up to other opportunities for you guys. And what I wanna say as an entrepreneur, um, social worker, that um, it's a bit of a mind shift when it comes to you care bearers that are so used to serving and not creating core values for yourself that you're worth more than what you're getting paid or you're more, you're, you're, um, your value is more than a valuation that tells you you have to do more and do more and do more. And as we're looking at what's happening in the world, it impacts our work. So all the untreated mental illnesses and all the different things that are happening, happening in the community comes across some of you guys' desk. And it doesn't mean that the federal government is going to say, well, wait a minute, we are having an influx of these type of situations, so let's give our social workers a break and cut their caseloads. I'm coaching a lot of people from near and afar, and I can say it's not just our local um, system, it's system in, in a whole. And so when you're looking at a solution to those of you who are burnt out, you're kind of tired of being um, feeling oppressed on your job, your supervisors, your managers, um, you're having um, budget cuts that's impacting your health insurance and your finances. Uh, we have to, and that's what I do. I go out and I find other opportunities that you can serve without feeling guilty or shameful about having a little bit of overflow in your life in terms of your financial resources. So for care bears, I know that there's a bit of a process because sometimes we have this scarcity mindset when it comes to money. Many of us didn't get into the profession for money. I know and I understand that. Okay, but is it okay for you to keep going to work? This is Monday. Some of you guys dreaded going to work today because you have a stack stack of cases, court deadlines, all of these different things. If you're in the schools, you have countless things you have to do. If you're in the hospital, you have countless things to do. Um, I came from child welfare for many years, so most of my examples would be from there. So when you hear me say you're bigger than the cubicle, it's because I'm picturing where I was and I appreciate the journey. I have, I really, really do miss, um, you know, doing some of the things that I did there. So one of my things that I challenge people on, you care bears out there, is understanding this scarcity mindset when it comes to your value and what it is that you need to be doing other than complaining and spending your happy hour on Friday complaining about the job because that's not really living. If you're looking at our profession from the lens of poverty, then you're going to always feel and assume that the people you're serving is poor. So I wanted to clarify on a post that I shared about the immigration work. The immigration work from George, um, the young lady, Georgia, she's been in uh, immigration work for six years. And it's not the bandwagon work that we see that's going on in our government right now. So what I'm telling you, when I go out, and I find ways for you guys to be um, doing what you love to do, serving people. And then there's a way that you can be compensated according to um, somewhat of your worth, because we can never fully be compensated our total worth, right? 
But this is what I'm saying. If you don't have the mindset that you deserve to have an overflow in any aspect of your life, then you're going to misunderstand the stuff that I'm putting out there. So I'm talking to the people who says, I'm tired of the pay cuts. I'm tired of being told to run and do more. I'm tired of being um, not supported in my work. I'm tired of not having enough to pay my bills. I'm tired of dodging 800 numbers, uh, student loans included, as a college-educated person. I have one person say they don't, they can't even afford $1,500. And if you're a professional, that's one of the things that you have to look at. Well, for, for whatever reason, if you cannot afford things and you went to college, got your degree, you did all the research and the studying, and for those of you moms and dads out there, you did the sacrificing of child care, running your kids to this child care place, that child care place at night, night school in it, doing everything that you're supposed to do and got your college degree. And if your car was to break right now, you have to go charge Capital One or Discover American Express to fix the car. And if you don't see that that's a problem, then you keep working. You keep, you keep, you know, planting the seed on, on the sharecropper's land. That's just what I'm going to say. So whatever your core value is, creating that value for yourself, that's you. But I am totally entrepreneurship. I know how to serve without compromising um, my work ethic. There are people out there that need your service beyond the impoverished lands. Let me just tell you, there are law firms, for example, who serve high-end clients. I'm going to rephrase that. There are law firms out there that have high-end customers. This is where some of you care bears, if you get all tangled up in what we're doing, there's a difference between a patient, there's a difference between a client, and there's a difference between a customer. So when you have a customer and you have all your expertise and all the skills that you bring as a social worker to that customer, you deserve to charge your worth in terms of your business. If you are not a business entrepreneurship type person, I understand you probably will not get what I'm trying to tell you. Doesn't matter. I still come on here and share with you guys that beyond complaining about what's going on in your workplace, what are you going to do about it? Because is that not what you're telling your clients? They're in a hard spot. They're struggling. They're making poor life choices at times. And you're trying to empower them to make a change, to do something different, right? So I'm telling you as a social work care bear that if there's a 1-800 care line that we call when the families are in crisis. I am the 1-800 care line for social workers who are in crisis. And your crisis may be you just don't have enough money to be off work when you're sick. And you're dragging your tail to work when you're sick, but you can't afford to be off. That's a crisis. You are a social worker going through a divorce and don't know how you're going to make it. But yet you're showing up on a job because you can't afford to be off because you're going through a divorce and you don't know what that's going to look like. You're not fully present to your clients. Let's let's keep it all the way real. You're not fully present to your client. You are there because you have to be there. And when your client is going through some stuff that look like yours and all that counter transference jump off, let's be real about it. We are sitting up in here acting like it's okay to have our culture of social work to be oppressive to have social workers. And for those of you who follow data, look it up, hit me up. I'll, I'll let you know that the crisis driven work that we're doing and how it's impacting service providers like you social workers out there, us social workers, the anxiety and depression is at a record high. We just had um, a psychiatrist, for example, where I'm getting my hours commit suicide two weeks ago. Another employee in the in the same building uh, found dead in her bed. This is not a game. This is very, very serious. But yet you're going to work acting like it's normal. Just like our clients, they normalize things that's comfortable. So if they deal with their pain points with methamphetamine, for example, and that's normal for them, 
And then the social worker going to work distressed, burnt out to the max, and that becomes your normal, then I'm the 1-800-CARE-LINE. Call me because I am here to pull you out of that mindset to let you know you need more than those three EAP mental health referrals that's offered. You need a timeout to unplug so you can create some core values that line up with what's worthy for you and your family. Because you can't give out, guys, what you don't have within yourself. So if you have high-end clients that are, I'm sorry, high-end customers, I'm talking to business owners now who have this mindset that you're tired of all of what I just described. But if you have attorneys calling you up and saying, hey, I need an assessment for my customer that I'm serving or their client that they're serving, and you have a business in place to do that assessment. And I didn't even get to tell you how long an assessment take. It take about nine, 10 hours, Georgia was telling me. And you charge him based on your expertise and your skills and your time away from your families. And that assessment need to be done whether or not you get it or not. And you're feeling guilty about that because your norm is always in a negative NSF or, you know, having your income be driven by an agency that has to cut corners every now and then without you knowing, then that's the scarcity mindset. You have a sense, we in our profession have a sense of this is just how it is and that's there's nothing else better. Now, when it talk when you when, when we heard when I was reading the whole thing about exploitation exploitation has to do with treating someone unfairly in order to benefit nowhere in an assessment or whatever you're doing um at my work ethic will I treat anybody unfairly what I can say is is it not exploitation and treating yourself unfairly. If you around here giving out free advice all the time, most social workers, you're a social worker in your home, you're a social worker at your family functions, you're a social worker on a night out when you're supposed to be relaxing, people running uh, questions about what you do, you're giving out free advice. Okay, as a business owner, I monetize my gifts and I show you guys how to do the same. There's no more freebies because I have financial objectives I need to make. And I say that without feeling guilty or feeling ashamed about it. Some of you guys out there are killer experts on what you do. But you're so used to serving from the lens of, from the lens that you are afraid or you feel like there's something wrong with charging a customer a little bit of what you're worth. It's not even your total... Um, Fees, I mean, if you, you can't put a, a dollar sign on your worth and your value and your um, expertise. You can't even um, put a number to that. But what I am telling you guys, even if you do something on the side, outside of the benefited positions you have now, there are options. And when I say it's time for social workers to be able to work from your overflow, that means you have to step out of your comfort zone. I'm talking to those who are tired, though. If you're cool, you 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 all the way good on your social work job, and you're you're making killer breakthroughs. You're doing all the lovely things and serving and empowering, and not drowning in caseload and court deadlines and being told you have to do more with less money and less resources. I'm not talking to you guys because if you guys are cool in your job, that's wonderful. I invite you to tell other people how to get there. Right. But I'm talking to those who I'm meeting with, whether I'm conferencing with them from other parts of the world and locally who are very tired and can't pay their student loans because they're not even bringing home enough. Some of them having to move back in with their family. I'm not even talking about people that's balling out of control, um, that maybe maybe living beyond their means. This is basic people that's living very modest. That's been told they have to do more, more, more with less, less, less. So hence, I go out and I find different ways that you can earn money and um, be okay with your earning potential. Now, you don't, I don't drive my practice off of money. 
I don't say, oh, I'm going to go do this because I can make this amount of money. If I know I do not like teenagers for whatever reason, I'm not going to go and um, sign up for a job and I know it calls for me to serve teens when I know I have a bias against teenagers so I can capitalize off of what the finances is for that job or whatever, or even in business. I don't contract and do work outside of what my gifts are and what my passion is. But I do know how to profit from my, my purpose. I, knew, I do know how to create profit from my passion without feeling guilty or shameful about it with my morals and my ethics intact. Some of you guys are not there yet because you feel like bringing up money is like taboo. Like, no, get over yourself. That scarcity mindset of your worth, you are worth. Every time I'm away from my family and I'm working long hours and I'm doing all of these things for these other agencies, but I'm only getting crumbs to where I got to tell Sally Mae, hold off, can I get a forbearance for the hundredth time? That's exploitation to me, by my definition. you I'm being exploited at this point. You're treating me unfairly to benefit your agency. So that's what I wanted to come tell you on Monday, because I know Mondays, most of my clients that I'm serving, um, and by the way, they're making killer breakthroughs, whether they get into baking on the side, whether they end up opening up a flower shop, things they're passionate about, and flowers and serving people, or whether they get into um, doing home studies on the side, whatever it is, that's what I show you. I show you another way because some people I know, they drive their work through overtime, which means you're not home with your babies. And let me, I, that's a whole nother post about what that meant for me and my family when I was not emotionally available and physically present for my kids because I was downtown working endless overtimes to pay for my dad's medication. And RIP to him, but I was trying to work, work, work because his medication prescriptions was ginormous. And so I was trying to hold it down for the family, plus pay for my dad medical prescriptions as a educated master's level social worker. And the only way I was able to do that was to work endless overtime and then have to explain these numbers to the IRS because on paper I was looking real, real pretty. But we know when we bring it home, it's a whole nother it's a whole nother issue. So when I went through those different turmoils and life experiences and started doing some self evaluations about my worth, hence I went out and I started thinking to myself, what can I do that I love to do and earn a profit without feeling guilty? You guys know the six core values of the social work profession. We're not compromising that. So you have a choice. You have a choice. You can keep working. I'm talking to those who I serve and all of you out there that I don't probably serve. I'm not on here as much. I'm on my Talk to Tasha page or whatnot. But if you are tired of living in a way that doesn't line up with your values, if you are tired of feeling guilty about um, serving from your deficit, which bring, brings on compassion fatigue. You're tired of like, in other words, you're giving out advice. You're doing service-driven work when you're tired, when you're cramping, when you have headaches and backaches and all kind of medical ailments hit your body. You're still serving. If you're tired of serving from your deficit is what I'm calling it, and you're trying to get to a place of overflow and surplus so you can have that uh, well-deserved vacation and that added peace and that added um, sense of purpose in how you're serving and you're tired of being viewed as a client basically the client the client have more perks than us sometimes if you keep it all the way 100 okay so it's time out for social workers in our profession to be impoverished in our thinking impoverished in our pockets Okay, some of us not even stepping in our gifts of macro. We need some macro folks out there. In fact, I met someone um, in San Francisco at a training who has never stepped foot in our profession, but she she value what we do, and she's working in um, policy, 
And part of her going to this training is she said she comes to different trainings to hear from social workers so she can stay connected to the work. So she can go back um, to the governmental offices and advocate for what we need. Here's a person who never even stepped foot in social work. So how more powerful that would be if you are in the work as a social worker, being in policy. You can speak without having to go to an extra training to learn about what we're doing. You can't do that if you're tired and burnt out and underpaid and devalued and you're jumping jobs because you're looking for a sense of uh, appreciation. Some system's not designed to appreciate you. You have to appreciate you from where you sit and appreciate the fact that you're in the space right now. We thank God for our jobs and our benefits, however low your income is. Because your spirits will get low, you'll get discouraged, and your baby, some of you guys have kids, are watching you college-educated people make payment arrangements on top of payment arrangements with your service, I mean, with your student loan servicer and your basic bills in your home. I can go on and on about this, but I'm going to do, um, I do, I'm planning some trainings. Um, I am pulling out those of you who have a gift far bigger than that cubicle. You have a gift far bigger than that um, office space. You have a gift far, far bigger than an evaluation that only um, reminds you of what you're not doing. I need to talk to you. Holla at your girl because I'm here to let you know there are options. There's other options you can be doing instead of being uh, subjected to a time clock. In fact, on a proactive side of things, before the kids even reach the system, I'm talking to you child welfare folks, there's a lot of work to be done. There's been this to be birthed out on a proactive side of things. And um, so I think I'm going to end you guys with that, but really reshape your lens of poverty you don't have to be impoverished and i'm talking not only monetarily but spiritually emotionally on very levels you deserve to be um, in a better space you deserve to be valued but it doesn't it doesn't mean you wait on somebody else to value you you have to know that you have to create your own core values and when you understand that and really operate in that truthfully without guilt or shame, your lens will change. You will understand that social work professionals, it's not all about our clientele or people we serve are not all poor, monetarily speaking. There are people who actually do, and just to give you just some examples, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there are people, social workers, who actually do assessments for people who travel. And they need to have a social work assessment to go along with a doctor's note to justify them traveling across the country with their pet. Some of you guys probably didn't know that because you're busy doing what you do. You don't have time to research and understand other ways that social workers out here serving. And can I tell you that is a big booming business where this uh, six-figure person um, has medical issues and they need to travel with their animals um, to whatever country. Some of us can't even afford to fly to some of these same countries. Um, so they need your expertise. And some of these, I will say, are LCSW required. I'm not going to sit here and um, pull a wool over your head and make you feel like you can jump up and do some of these things if you're not LCSW. I'm not even LCSW yet. But I am making some breakthroughs and serving in a way that brings me more joy, added peace, more time on a Monday where I can sit here and, and spell out my guts to you guys to let you know your level of worthiness is far greater than spending the weekend talking about your nine to five job. That's just not cool. That's not even your own time. At that point, you're bringing your work home. Is that not burnout compassion fatigue? So don't start thinking that our profession is limited to people who are under the homeless bridge. Um, you have some financially well-off people that are spiritually impoverished. They're emotionally impoverished that need your work. And they're willing to pay 
but you're too scared to to put a price out there other than the 30 or 40 bucks an hour that you're making take out all the taxes you back you back hoping and wishing that you can be in the food stamp line yourself let's keep it all the way 100 because that's all i'm gonna tell you is, is what's real i'm not telling you to go capitalize capitalize off the vulnerabilities of people I'm telling you that our profession serves far greater than the people that you're thinking. And I would lend myself to say that the person with the six figures need our service more, more 911 type than anybody else because they're in the level of monetary influence. And if they become healthy and whole with your expertise and you're injecting hope in them and you're injecting um, some of the core values that we know, that will help them be a better person. Hence, they might bust around and fund your nonprofit that you have, or hence turn around and do some of the things we need them to do in the community to help our impoverished families. That's what I'm talking about when you serve from your overflow. When you get to a place where you can serve from your overflow, you and the work that I'm doing, I'm planning on coming to your jobs and busting in your cubicles with a paid vacation all expense pay vacation, having social workers nominated across the country for the breakthrough work that they're doing and talk to Tasha bus up in there with your car payment paid off in full with no questions asked. That's why I'm out here grinding in the paint. For us, our tribe, for the reshaping of our culture of social work, it's time out for us to be addicted on pills and nobody talking about it. Addicted to appeal to, to make us wake up, uh, appeal to go to sleep, appeal to deal with a client, appeal for this, appeal for that, mental illness, but nobody talking about it. Except we're going to these funerals at my job. My primary funder is what I call it. I'm primarily being funded from my nine to five, doing what I have to do to get where I need to go. Some of you guys don't have an action plan because you're sitting in what's comfortable. Much like our clients that we serve, they're comfortable doing what they're doing. So if that's you and you're like, wait a minute, I need to have a game plan. I need to sketch out something larger than what I'm getting myself credit for. I need to know what my skills are. Some of our agencies is not set up to make you an expert or give you an opportunity to create what you're naturally passionate about. So you can become an expert and market yourself as an expert in human trafficking and charge your, your worth or somewhat of your work. Like I keep saying, we can never be compensated at a level that our worth is because it's priceless. But did you know that there's people that seek out qualified experts in our field and you sitting there sucking your thumb and marching down these, these streets about striking and marching and all that and the heat? I mean, it's good to do that, but it's also good to know in the midst of you marching there's opportunities sitting here waiting on you. And the people that I'm connecting with that's out here grinding in the paint, they, they're they doing real good. They're off for three or four months. They're living a life that's lived and not a life that's scheduled. If that's you, holler at your girl because that's who I'm here for, to let you know there is a space in this world to serve far greater than you're giving yourself credit for. So holler at me. I will put my website here, get yourself uh, booed up with a consultation. And let's start living instead of striving and thriving and surviving. Let's get out of our comfort zone. Let's get some of you guys in policy. Let's get some of you guys experts monetizing what you already know to do. Let's stop spending our weekends talking about your job. Let's talk about the solution side of how you're going to win so you can show up better to your, your clients. And on the business side of things, breakthrough products for your customers. And just to let you know, I did my homework. I'm a businesswoman. I don't play games with this. So the NASWA, the Dr. Wong that I'm in contact with, yeah, you as a social worker can have a business. Don't let nobody tell you you can't. Serving, doing what you do without having an LCSW, without being an ASW, without having an MSW. I did my research. I'm not out here playing. So if you're not out there, if you want to play around with these oppressive systems that got you stuck, working all this overtime, can't be with your families, that's who I'm talking to because the people I'm talking to across the globe, that's what I'm hearing. 
And I'm a solution-focused type of chick. I'm not here to state the obvious. What are we going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Wait for the next uh, director to come in? Because some of you guys are director material. You won't even apply for the director job because your sense of unworthiness. I don't want to get all involved in that. It's too political. Baby, you already a part of the politics. When you clocking into a system, you already a part of it. What side of the desk you want to be sitting on? The side of influence or the side of complaining? I'm just saying, you can't, there's no getting around it. You're going to be a recipient of what's imposed, or you're going to be in the seat of influence. Which side you want to sit on? I'm just saying. Or you can keep moving through the world complaining, being oppressed, not having enough to make ends meet up together. Yet you're trying to empower clients to do the same thing that you need to do. That, that's, that when you talk about exploiting and not being all the way truthful and being transparent, right? That's a whole nother. So I'm going to be doing, I'm, I do online uh, growth shops for helping professionals like yourself. Get tapped in or get tapped out on your energy. I'm not playing around with social work and how we recreate the culture of our field. Because if you do nothing, nothing is going to change. Your babies and grandbabies is watching you. Go to work. Come home. Tired. Tired people do tired things and we make tired decisions. That's why we have tired and poor outcomes. That's why we have so many people on workers' comp. They do not care if a check even drop. They just want to be outside of that work environment because they are compassion, fatigue, burnt out to the max. Nobody's talking about it, but we're showing up to funerals. And everybody's saying, oh, that person was kind of stressed. That person was kind of whoop de whoop It's time out for us watching the fires, people. I'm talking to my social work carriers. You have to care enough for yourself to know your value. What is your core beliefs about our profession? That we only serve the poor and um, impoverished? It doesn't mean, um, yeah, and poor and impoverished, like I said earlier, comes in many forms. Okay, I worked for doctors for many years before I got into the work. And I can tell you, they need social work services. Considering our social work services and profession is very, very broad. And so that's going to be my Monday mindset. So your mindset is what? A set of attitudes that you hold about yourself. And once you get clear about what you hold about yourself and your core values, then you can have a, 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 a mindset to appreciate some of the value um, created content that I'm bringing to you so that you can thrive. Together we can thrive, move forward. You're better in a better space mentally so you can show up to the job and serve from your space of abundance. I'm out. I'm out. Monday Mindset. Get it or quit it.